Barb is here. Let's go get her. Barb. Lauren's place. Thank you, ma'am. Holy cow. Good to see you. Good to see you too. How you been? Wow, really good. Very good, yeah. very good. This is a, dr a dry steam, yep. so it's not going to hurt me. This is blue, this is barb. Hi, Hi. Nice to meet you. All right, so if you want to grab your... Uh, yeah, I'll grab my, yeah. my props. Kilts? Oh, I'll help you here. Okay, no. Yeah. Sounds good. Dave and I read each other every page in here. Oh, thank you. Checking for mistakes and typos before, <laughs> before I took it to the press. And after it was done, I found two typos. Oh. But this one doesn't have typos. So that, you can have that, and I will take this back so you don't have the one with the typo. <laughs> My first edition, though, Barb. It's going to be worth money. Yeah, it is from early days. Do you want to keep this? I'll keep it. Okay. I'll pay you for this one. No, no, you have yes. to keep it. I brought, no, I brought it for you so you can have No, I'm paying for it. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> so, so what do we got? So this is Dave's New Hampshire tartan kilt. Yes. You, you've seen the target? Yes, the yep, yep, yep. You do something very, very similar to I do that I think most kilt makers miss a trick entirely is when we put our buckles on, we actually put it, we will put it another like another quarter, quarter inch, inch yeah. that way. This was so, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, but most yeah. companies put it, you know, back here. Right, so you and put then, it through and then the hole keep and, it for every day. Yep, 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 yep. Totally get it. All right, Adam, get in here. Oh, I'm glad to say that. <laughs> say no, it's... Um, the, the mark of a, I've, I've said, you know, time and time and time again, the mark of a good hand sewn kilt is the number of stitches per inch. Mm -hmm. And if I do this and can't see the stitches, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I want. It's yeah. the ones that have like four or five yeah, stitches, stitches per inch, inch and you yeah. just see, and you see tick marks. Yeah. Each yeah. individual thing. This, yeah. I, I recognize how much longer it takes to do, um, on a machine, you just, Turn a yeah. dial, instantly yeah. you have more stitches per inch. Yeah. In hand sewing, you have to go each individual one, every one is a stroke of the hand. And it's yeah. it is it is literally that tight. That is ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna find any flaws in that. That's beautiful. It really is. Thanks. These are three I'm working on right box now. Box plated one we're working on. Very yeah, nice. So this is something that Peter McDonald had woven. So it has the mm -hmm. traditional uh yeah, the herring herring bone salvage. salvage. Yep. And uh Right now, it's just it's at the point where I'm, I've just put the canvas mm -hmm. in. So, and you pleat mm -hmm. the canvas. Yeah, to give it enough stiffness. Why do you why do you pleat it as opposed to shape it? Because to me, mm -hmm. this can accordion and stretch. Oh, it, it can, but it can't stretch any farther than the steeping underneath. Okay. So it's it's completely steeped all the way across. Right. So that can't stretch. <clears throat> so this is pleated in order to fan it. Okay. Unless the kilt is absolutely straight, you need to have some kind of pleating in there so that it's bigger across here than it is up here. So yes, it's and it's because it's lying flat on the table, it's not as extended as it would be if mm -hmm, somebody's mm -hmm. wearing it. But you can't stretch it past the steaking. And the same thing with here. There's a stabilizer yeah. right here that it won't allow. Yeah, I know you have the stabilizer yeah. underneath. What we end up doing is we use the uh, uh, a, a firm, a, a very firm uh, horsehair canvas kind of thing. Uh -huh. We get it from We Rob over in yeah. the UK, um, and I'll actually do one piece uh -huh. and then uh, essentially dart it and then sew on the front and the back of the dart. Okay. So that it is you know solid mm -hmm. this direction a hundred percent. Since you since you steek the pleats or put mm -hmm. the uh, not steak but you put the basting stitches yeah. in um it's much easier oh, i'm going to screw everything up um i was trying to take a thread off not that one <laughs> the uh, it's much easier for you to iron it this way since we don't do the basting oh right we have to you know yeah. manipulate this way then manipulate oh, yeah, that way yeah. and yeah. yeah yeah that is uh not fun but no but but when i stitch them i don't try to stitch a box in there right okay. So yeah. if I'm if I'm stitching a box pleated kilt, what I would do would be I would start here 
and I would take it to wherever it's going to be and I'd run a stitch line up here, then I'd go over here, I'd take this over and I'd run a stitch line. And then once I'm done, if this is stitched to here, then I'm done, I just open it up and put the box in it. Like yeah. That. Yeah, so you're, you're not you're trying tuck to it stitch. either direction. Yeah. Some people think you, you stitch it up this way, then you turn this and you stitch this, and, and then you don't do that. And then when once you're done doing all the pleating, you open up each box. Mm -hmm. So this it, when you're stitching it, everything flaps that way, right? Mm -hmm. And then you just open it up so that the box meets in the middle of the next pleat over. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And how did you, how do you do, what do you do with this fabric that's in, I noticed that there's, you know, two folds right. there. Yeah, so in, a, in the case where there would be either too little or too much in the deep pleat, right. I put in a hidden pleat. Got it. In fact, I can show you because this, I put a hidden in, pleat in this one that I just started. Right here underneath. I didn't know if it was for apron shaping no. or it's, it's not no, for apron it's shaping, a, it's for it's too much fabric and you're kind of getting rid yeah. of some of it in there. So this one, this one has a hidden pleat. Okay, so it's only, so but it's, it's only just, a minuscule. Well, sometimes they can be big. It depends on the set. Okay. You know, you get a huge set, like 12 or 13 inches and it depends just, on where that last pleat lands. Depends on where lands. that last pleat lands and all of Center that kind of apron, stuff. Yep. So this is a small one, and I almost didn't put it in, and I decided to put it in, but I would probably didn't really need it. And then you just simply s stitch these two together yep. and treat that as one, and then you just pick stitch up there, and then that just gets treated as one and pressed. Part of the reason I put this in on this kilt um, is that it's 14 ounce. And that okay. edge gets flabby pretty easily right, for right. someone who's not willing to take good care of it. But this one, this one's going to be fun because it's pleated to the stripe, obviously, because all, every pleat is exactly the same. Um, but when the pleats open up, it's going to show this beautiful the red. yellow. No, it's going to show or the yellow stripe. The, the, yeah, the yellow it's pop. going to show yeah. the yellow. So now, how problem. do you feel about pleating to the, the no stripe or the lawn chair effect? You know, it depends on, this doesn't have lawn chair to me. If it would have lawn chair if there were, say, two white stripes here, something like that. Right. This isn't going to look, it, yes, there'll be a really strong horizontal. Yeah. But even some kilts that are pleated with a central stripe. Um, depending on the stripe depending chosen Depending on the, the contrast, structure and yeah, the contrast, it can, it can yep, yep. have that same stripe. So what I do is I always pin it up. And if it looks lawn chair to me, I don't even offer it as an option. <laughs> this is one of those that it's successful because this is somewhat muted. Yeah. Um, it's not like... A bold red scarlet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Something like that. So... Now, does, do you think that the, uh, the double, uh, you know, or the, essentially the, the edge, the mm -hmm. hidden pleat, does that, do you think that helps with shaping or immaterial? It can't solve a bad shaping. Fair. Um, if there is not enough flare, it's going to accentuate the, the kick forward of the edge of the, of the yeah. apron. Um, but if it's well shaped to begin with, it helps hold the shape and it doesn't allow that apron edge to get kind of flabby and kind of open up right. um, the way it can do. But if it's not well shaped to begin with, it doesn't help, not at all. My band kill has uh, a hidden pleat in it, and it's uh, it always looks good because it's nice and sharp on both edges. Right. And and it's also if I'm making a, a kilt for a kid, it's a place where you hide the fabric to let it out, let the aprons out. Yep. I've I've gone to using the towel method for measuring hips, but I have them roll up a towel and s stick it right here under their belly so that it's so that it's Stays nice and flat. even. And, measure and then around I measure the towel. all the way around the towel, and hmm. then I split the even measurements evenly, so twenty four and twenty four or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And then, the the kilt when I make it doesn't pull in under their under their belly. Yeah, And yeah, it yeah. goes straight down the front, and they look so much slimmer. Yep. Than they would. If, yep. And I get them to buy sporin hangers too, so that they don't then get a sporin that drags the kilt in yep. underneath and pucker it. What, I, what I've actually taken to doing um, is 
I always put the strap or the kilt chain above the buckles on the side mm -hmm. so it doesn't hang down. If yeah, you have smart. it yeah. there, then it underlines, but if you yeah, keep yeah. it up, yeah, it that's stays a good up. Idea. Yeah. And I started putting my belt over top to keep it in place. Right. Um, yeah. It's a little untraditional, but it works and it stays centered and neater. You know, so. that's what Elsie said uh, at Kill Camp. She said they're all these guys who want to have, have belt loops. And she doesn't, I don't like putting up loops on kilts either because it ruins the line of the back. She said, all you have to do is put the strap over the, the buckles. Yep. And then you don't feel like you, it's going to go south on you. So, so anyway, there's that one. This nice. one is Irish National, obviously. Okay. And do a lot of people one. choose the stripe with you or this just happen to be several to the stripe? It just have well, a box pleated kilt is almost yeah, yeah. always to yeah, the yeah. stripe. So every once in a while, you have just the right tartan, and you can do the pseudo set. So yep, alternate a main pleats. element, main element. Yeah, 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 but it has to be exactly the right set size. Yeah. Uh, this one was kind of a pain because it's a bit big. It's big, but it wasn't big enough. The pink edge stripe on this right was just just into the it was just into the pink that and then would lose it. Yeah. So I decided to put more pleats in and there's actually overlap yeah so it's a bit like a a very low yardage military bike. <laughs> so that way i could make i put one more pleat in i could make them narrower because otherwise it was going to each pleat was going to be like three just, inches wide and, yeah. and a little pink on the edge and i really didn't think that was going to look good so we'll see how it goes i wouldn't i wouldn't go wider than that that's about the, it feels to me like about the right width for a box pleat. I totally get you. Yeah. 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 It's because once once they get too big, it starts looking like the uh, like a women's business skirt yeah, suit totally. thing, yeah, where it's I like agree. you know, <laughs> yeah, three or four big box pleats in the back, and it's yeah. yeah. And, and I I wrestled with that because it, I didn't want them that big, and I didn't want them pink on the edge and then tapering. Oh my gosh, there are thirty pleats in this. And this guy isn't all that big, but he really wanted it pleated to the yellow stripe. And it's House of Edgar, and it's a fairly small set. It's like under six inches. Yeah. So I put in three Couple double deep. depth yeah. plates, you know, just, just to use up the the tartan. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's the same thing that you'd do if you were making something in, in black wash or something like that. You have to do the set. Now, when you scallop out on, mm -hmm. do you scallop every single pleat? Yes. Okay. Yep. And you can see the steeping. What we what we have taken to doing uh -huh. is I will scallop the front half of Oh I see. Yeah. Of or I'll, I'll scallop three and then leave one. So mm -hmm. it basically covers up or you know it's it's underneath. That yeah. way when you steak these all together, you're attached here all the way across and you're also attached up in the waistband because they're all attached to that one last pleat. Or yeah, that every yeah. fourth pleat or whatever it is you'll yeah. leave in, or you just take yeah. off the front. Sure. You know, more structural rigidity yeah. within the thing. I steek this pleat. I lift this one up. I steek all the way to the stitching. Mm -hmm. Then I go back, fold this one down, steek all the way to the stitching. And that solves some of that problem. It's not just tacked across oh, the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's the people that will just, you know, basically do a quick oh, one yeah, stitch yeah. across there. Yeah, that's, no, one that's... of those snaps, and then the whole thing just right. starts sagging, and then you have the yeah, pleats absolutely. drooping down. Absolutely. Or the or the companies that will omit this, and then they just do the, and omit the steaking, and it's just the, the lining holds The lining these is in the place. only thing that holds that. Pleat. Yes, yeah. and then as soon oh, as the pipe band snaps one pleat, yeah, they all they drop. All drop. Yeah. Yep. Yep, I totally get it. Some companies either don't think are important or skip on because it takes too much time right. or whatever because people aren't going to see it. Totally agree with you. And There's some things that are really important. <clears throat> the one thing that you do that I find, you and some traditional kilt makers do and others don't, that I find interesting is having an extra inch over yeah. there mm -hmm. so it's not symmetrical. That to my, my drives, you crazy. drives me crazy. I, I, I need it to be symmetrical yeah, and then I'll add an extra pleat underneath or yeah. I'll have the whole thing yeah. wrap around the touch sure. more. Um, yeah. I can why, understand that. so why do you do the one extra inch on one side? Because the way, the way Elsie measures for kilts 
ครับ you don't add anything to the waist measurement and because the kilt is so bulky you've got if if you get think about where the apron is it's come around and it's got to go over the under apron over all of this and if you just work with the measurement that you have you're going to be a half inch short you'll be a half inch short over top or of. even yeah. mid short depending on how how thick, thick the, the fabric is. is yeah and so that's the reason and i've always done it because that's how i was taught right and i totally understand why why you wouldn't do that but you can't just use the measurements yes you have to yep you have to add a little bit kind of yep. the same About way as the towel measurement that kind of thing yep yeah now we yep. take care of it in a different yeah, yeah in a different way yep so the other choice would be to add a half inch here and a half inch here right that would work and then on this edge i only add a half an inch here and a whole inch here because this with a half an inch smaller really pulls it in on the on your side right and it's not it's not uh, as big as the rest of the kilt so as long as the engineering is good mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um it, yes either way works yeah no i, I understood yeah. and that's why it's the you know there's a hundred ways to skin a cat kind of thing it's the making sure that you're thinking about these things and you're not just ho oh, hum you know and right. just go over it so right. your yeah. yours works differently than ours works but it's you have a preference same thing. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So get, you get the same place in the end zoom in here the uh this is you know the attention to detail on the stripe making sure everything is exactly dead on perfect and if you look down this direction uh, when we have people come to uh apply for a kilt making job we'll you know, we you know interview interview them first, and if they make it to round two, we actually uh, put them through their paces a little bit and say, okay, here's a piece of cloth, and then we make them uh, iron it, we make them serge it, we make them put pleats in two pieces of cloth, basically just a waistband scrap. Mm -hmm. um, and then when they're done, Mac brings them over here, and you know I'll lay it on the table and say, okay, you know, critique your own work. How'd you do? And I'll stand at this edge because <laughs> I want to see how yeah. the pleats line up and I want to see if they can point out, well, I was a little bit off here, but these look good and you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Because you can't teach that eye for detail. It's or very, very difficult really to teach it. That's it's you idea. either have it and you're obsessed and you're detail oriented, yeah. or right. you're just fast and loose and it's just, you know, hey, it's it's organic. It's, it's close enough. Yeah, or it's close enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huh, isn't that interesting? Yeah. So the top the top band on this one was interesting because it was double width fabric and he wanted a kilt for his himself and his son. And his son is six seven? They're both tall. So you had to rip up vertically and I didn't, but I had just Barely. Oh my god. And so it's very carefully stitched right above yeah. the and I'm gonna put the oh, line geez. right up at the top, but it's not going anywhere. Yeah. But man, there Ooh. wasn't much fabric to make. That's scary. Yeah, and the and the and the I the top edge or the, the edge that I stitched here is only the fringe edge is about a or the rough edge is about a quarter inch down yeah. here. But there's enough there's enough on there. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's there's enough meat but there. Still. As long as you just put the lining right up at the yeah, very top, it'll yeah. be fine. And this one doesn't have the extra deep, extra yeah. Didn't need it. Right on. So nice. And what tartan is this? The green Ramsey. So there's green? a blue and a red. Yeah. And there's yeah, also yeah. a green. It looks nothing like either of the other Ramseys. It kind of fades from these big blotches into the, sort of the. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's different. One thing that I noticed um, years ago, it was kind of a light bulb moment. Was Mac and I were looking at different tartans and like what tartans I have, which tartans I like, or we're going to get next or whatever. And the thing that I noticed that I kept saying like, I like this one, I like this one. The thing they all had in common was two of the same color, just different ah, shades. shades. So like our um, American Dream, Oh. I have three shades of red and three shades yeah. of blue. Yeah. And it gives it a uh, emotion, if you will. Um, and it's, it's an, it's, Instead of just having another red, white, and blue tartan, mm -hmm. it gives it an interest. Yeah, um, very cool. And same with this. Same with this. Yeah, yeah. it's the, the two shades of green that make it different. Yeah. I brought a piece of my all-time favorite tartan. Oh, is it the volcanic one? This is volcanic. Yeah. With the Icelandic flag 
And it reminded me of it because you've got these gradational shades yep. of, yep. of uh, yellow to orange to red. Yeah, no, it looks it looks volcanic. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. They, it pleats very differently on different sides of the double width fabric. Yeah. And you can't do the same thing on the two sides because it's such a it's big, such a big set. set. Yep. And it's asymmetric. A, it is a beautiful tartan. Um, but B, it's those kind of things that in tartan design mean something, yeah. give it more meaning and more yeah. thought. And the more yeah. you, thought you put into it, the, yeah. the better it'll end up coming out. Yeah. No, I, I, I love your work. Always have. Thank you. It's, <laughs> I've you know, said for years, anytime someone wants a hand sewn kilt, call you. I'm curious, do you know what the, uh, what the standards are at like the schools in Scotland? Do we know what the standards are for I Stitches no Per Inch? Idea. I'd be very curious to know that. Elsie's standard from um, Thomas Gordon's in Glasgow from when they, when she apprenticed with them yeah. was that you shouldn't be able to put a pencil point between your stitches. Now that's really, Depends on how sharp your pencil yeah. is, right? <laughs> but, you know, so me being anal, I have a very sharp pencil, right? <laughs> so maybe yeah. people have really fat pencils. Um, but, the shaft of the pencil, the shaft. Shaft, please, yes. <laughs> but in looking at the work that she did, I would say it's a fairly sharp pencil. Uh, you know, honestly, my rule of thumb is that if you can't stitch it with whatever color thread you have in hand, <clears throat> and not see the stitches, you're doing okay. Fair. You know, Fair. I always match the thread, Yeah. but yeah, yeah. I've tried it. I've tried black thread on a kilt like this and, or on a kilt like this, and if you do a good job, you can't see the stitches. Yeah. So you shouldn't be able to see them. They shouldn't come back in far enough. And then as you say, when you pull like that, you shouldn't be able to see the- Yeah, because the, the body pressure just pushing out and heat and time and, yeah. and sweat and moisture will yeah. make the, the wool kind of relax. So if you're right. pushing out, it's going to stretch it. You're yep. going to see the little marks. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Very good. Well, I think our lunch is here. Okay. Are you hungry? Yeah. Very good. Not really. Excellent. So we'll eat lunch and then we'll, uh, Get ready for the inter the official interview. Okay, okay. Excellent. You know, one of the most rewarding parts of my job is getting to know and hang out with people like Barb Tewksbury, people who are passionate about kilt making and who are passionate about this culture in the same way that we are passionate about it. If you want to see my full sit down interview with Barb or us interview a whole lot of other people in this space, it's all available on our channel.